Hello, everyone. Welcome to our newest episode of Keeping Up with the Ambassador. Hello, Yael. Good to have you here. Hi, Diamond. Thank you. It's really a pleasure for me to talk to you again. And for those that you, that don't know, this format is a sort of way that we are at the Charney Resolution Center try to keep in touch and build this network of those alumni from MS that graduated and still want to be involved with the mission and with the goals of both the Charney Center and MS. For those that don't know, MS is a small international boarding school in north of Tel Aviv that brings together Palestinian, Israelis, and international students and tries to thrive for peace. And the Charney Resolution Center helps them a lot in different projects. And uh, we have the honor to have here Yael, who is not only an ambassador, she will be the new director assistant. So she'll be helping Sari in, in many of the tasks in the upcoming year. And uh, yeah, how are you doing, Yael? I'm great. I'm great. It's really nice to talk with you. And I'm extremely excited to partner with Charney again and do all these projects. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Because also, what was it, two years ago when I was? Yeah, two years position, ago, yeah. When I was mm -hmm. the intern at the center, you were one of the mini interns, maybe, or like the the people, for, the students that help with the peace generation. We did a good job, mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, so how how did that experience sort of like shape your last year at MS and shape like leading the peace generation at the time? How how was it for you? Uh, it was really difficult for me actually because um, usually I do politically. I guess I leaned more towards the left, but I had this conversation with my literature teacher, um, and she was like. Yeah, you, you have your own opinions, but you do need to remember that you are also representing other people's opinions, you know, because we sometimes say the Palestinian narrative, the Israeli narrative, but she kind of focused me and told me, no, but there is more than one Palestinian narrative. There is more than one Israeli narrative, and you should remember that you need to represent all of them, the ones you agree with, the ones you half agree with, the ones you don't agree with. And I kind of needed to take on multiple roles and multiple views to make sure that we give the most, um, I guess, objective experience for the students and to make sure that everyone's narrative and life story are represented in the peace simulation, yeah. um, you know, a more inclusive experience. So I had to kind of get out of my comfort zone, I guess, and consider things in a different light. Yeah, it's never easy balancing all those conflicting and different point of views. And I think you brought up a good point that sort of like we have this sort of like duality in our head of there's the Israeli and the Palestinian side, and that's really not how it is. And there's so many like sub sides and there's like another division could be like religious and secular people or old and young generation. Like there's so, so many ways to map and divide the people that are involved in like in, in that area and and you're right that it's it's important especially in the peace simulation where students take on the sort of like slightly more objective and distance and like professional side like let's sit down and negotiate real life uh it's important to like keep in mind that your perspective your personal opinion right there is not the most important thing because you're representing a delegation Mm -hmm. But I think exactly. what's also what's difficult for students often is that to realize that this is a bit of a like role play and that if there you're representing a certain position, it doesn't mean that that's what you think. It doesn't mean you really believe it's the best solution, but it's a bit of a like mental and social exercise. Mm -hmm. and, I completely um, agree. I'm curious to hear, how has your time since MS been? You graduated two years ago, right? Yeah, I graduated two years ago. Um, the first year I didn't do much. I actually, I worked a bit and I went through a really difficult process of trying to uh, get out of the army and not take part of the IDF, I guess. It took a while because of COVID and lots of other reasons. Um, mainly my reasoning was ideological, but 
Um, this year, this past year, I've been doing national service as a paralegal in the Israeli Ministry of, um, wait a sec, um, justice. Justice, yeah, the Criminal Minister of Justice. Um, just from the my own perspective, that I do feel like if everyone else my age are sacrificing an amount of time or effort towards a cause for a year or two, um, I should also do that because I don't think it's fair to piggyback over other people's time and effort. Um, and also I thought if there's a way for me to uh, serve or help my country, like, you know, the people, because mainly most of the cases I deal with are uh, sexual abuse, um, rape, uh, like uh, domestic violence, uh, even crime families, like all of these things that they affect real people in this world um, and they have nothing to do with the conflict or the army or the war or anything that's happening politically in Israel. Um, so my perspective was to actually help people in this year, like with the work I do, just in a way that doesn't also negate my beliefs and contradicts my own moral philosophy. And I think that's why national service was the perfect solution for me before um, higher uh, schooling and like the academia and the rest of my life, even though I am extremely like stressed about starting that part of my life, I guess. Um, I really want to do that. And it was really difficult to make the decision to take a year or two and now even three like putting all my dreams on pause to do these other things. But I do think it's important and allowed me to also grow. And this past year, I've been involved in more sustainability and climate change and um, political uh, groups and mainly projects, I guess, um, mainly because I... I never did that in MS or I did it less in MS and in the past, like in the first year after I fin I graduated because I thought it wasn't authentic of me to start volunteering if I wasn't this hardcore climate change activist and I've never been that before. And if I was inauthentic to start, you know, to start a project or to start volunteering and one day I was just like, wait, no, bullshit. I, I don't care if it's not authentic. I care about this and even if I don't care about it 100%, I will start caring about this when I start to do something. So I just started doing things and that led to a whole new project and meeting people and hearing their stories and um, different Israelis and Palestinians and all other amazing experiences. And I'm really happy I did that. Yeah. Tell me um, more. I'm curious about, uh, cause we've talked a bit before and you told me that this organization, this project you're working on sort of like brings together locals from Israel and Palestine to work on climate stuff. Can you tell me yeah. more about like the specific project yeah, for and sure. what you're involved with? Um, so this is one of them. It's uh, under the direction of Neve Shalom uh, School for Peace in Neve Shalom in Israel. Um, so mainly it's a climate change uh, project that brings Israeli and Palestinians together in small groups. And then you design a project together that affects both Israel and Palestine, because the main idea is that climate change has no borders and the climate crisis has no borders. And if we're affected from it, they will be affected from it also and all the other regions in the Middle East specifically. And it also involves a lot of heavy uh, dual um, conversations, like dual national conversations. Like we sit in a circle for hours and discuss both uh, the climate crisis and the conflict. Uh, it could go from the violence to protesting to now we talked about the turbines in Ramat Golan, if you heard about it. Um, and so, yeah, so it involves all of those things. And aside from that, I'm also a part of the project with Green Course. We are petitioning the Knesset in Israel to um, demand that new buildings will implement uh, solar panels. Uh, because in Israel we have a lot of sun and we do have um, we do have a shortage of uh, energy and electricity and specifically now that we have these heat waves like it's extremely hot right now in Israel and in the Middle East. Same in Italy. Um, in yeah, all of the and 
Yeah. And there are many, many people in Israel, specifically from lower income and the uh, periphery that don't get enough electricity and don't get enough energy specifically in these times. And we have these huge like solar panel farms in the Negev, but they are not connected to anything. So they don't provide any electricity right now. So we want to utilize roofs and this space that already has, you know, in the infrastructure to hold solar panels. Um, and it will also decrease people's um, expenses for the month. It could save a lot of money. Uh, and it could also use as kosher electricity for uh, people who um, don't want to uh, use generators during Saturday Shabbat. because generators yeah. usually, they pollute a lot. Um, so that's another thing. And the third thing actually haven't started yet. I have a seminar that's called Tech to Peace, which involves Israeli and Palestinians, uh, all like, you know, from the ages of 20 to 30. And it has like two weeks of like high tech courses and dialogue. And later on, you continue to be a member in this group. And you go in delegations to like Switzerland to like talk about the conflict and you have meetings and you basically want to collaborate together to create startups or companies or some ways to make the world a better place. Um, specifically through using connections between Israel and Palestinians and Israelis and Palestinians. And that's basically it though. <laughs> wow, so many cool projects. Very exciting. <laughs> and congratulations for getting so engaged and putting yourself out there. And I'm curious to hear, um, like how, I don't know how involved you are at MS with peace talks, et cetera. I know you led the peace simulation, so probably quite a bit, but how do you see our, the different approaches, similarities, et cetera, between sort of like dialogue between Israel and Palestinians in MS, in the bubble of like the students and boarding school and everyone's lovey and dramatic and mm. gossip and everything. And how is it in sort of like the real world? Like now you're out there, you're a young adult, you're you're still with young people, but it's sort of like you're talking with the Knesset. It's it's a bit it feels more like real life. And so I, I'm mm -hmm. curious if you like how it's transitioning and how do you see the similarities and differences? I actually think that um kids or like teenagers are way more straightforward and I think actually dialogues work much better in MS than in the real world because we do have this problem of being politically correct I think like I do notice it in spaces where there are more adults they are afraid to say anything they're careful yeah. um yes they are extremely careful they're extremely apologetic and I don't think there would be like I see how much progress we did in MS with students that were not afraid to say their opinions. And even if they're like, even if they backtracked or had an argument, they, these talks led to much more productive solutions and product and friendships. And I think that's actually a great space to talk about the conflict rather in, in the real world, because I just think that when you are careful and when not everything is on the table because you're um, afraid it would offend. I'm not saying like if you need to say something bad, but I'm saying that if you're like avoiding a topic that's crucial and is happening, then that's bad. You know, like we shouldn't be afraid to address everything that's happening within the conflict, uh, whether it would um, I mean from the Israeli side or the Palestinian side. And I actually think that in MS and the teenagers in general are um, just, they're more courageous and they just, they're not afraid to head straight to the difficult topics and the more controversial topics, I would say. And I am a bit intimidated to like approach all of these projects from like the intern or the coordinator um, position and not as a student, because I do think there's a different amount of responsibility and maturity that comes with it. Um, also, I need to create a space for them to work and not be the one who is creating, you know, the new ideas or the new, like I'm, yes. I'm more of a leader rather than, leader. than a participant. Yes. Yeah. So that's like a whole different thing. And also 
I, I am a bit scared that I am an Israeli and I don't want them to see me as a bias, biased person, you know, because I do have my own identity. I don't want anyone to feel like I am, you know, um, taking the conversation towards my own opinions and towards my own beliefs, um, whether it would be my political leaning, my nationality, my identity, anything. Um, because I do know that in the past few years, the people who have been the coordinators have been more international. And I know they have their own beliefs, but I do know I come with more tags, I guess, than yeah. other people, you know, like the first Especially impression would be different. Yeah. Yes. So I am specifically, you know, working at, on how to approach students in the beginning. So I would be this like objective and neutral place rather than someone they will be afraid to talk to or um, afraid to raise their opinions because they have this certain opinion of me I guess yeah I see yeah it's always difficult to sort of navigate when you're your you're your own individual with as you said your own biases and of course especially in such a like loaded topic like political yeah politics and the conflict and all of that it's hard to separate it. Like, of course, you'll always still be an Israeli speaking with your history, with your identity and background, etc. On the other hand, you're also sort of like covering a role that is a bit less about like you, yourself and more about, as you said, the, the space that you want to create so that other students can like rise up and speak up and bring a, bring about projects. But also I'm, I'm confident that it will, it will be all right. <laughs> And go well, um, and and I'm curious to hear if you have any any other ideas other than the peace simulation or mission week that you would like to to bring about, like any topics, any any new projects. I know the Charney is always looking for new, new ideas, things, yeah, new ideas, exactly, ventures. Um, actually, um. There is a new thing that we're going to do. Um, it's not my own idea. I do have my own ideas, but I know that's like a new thing that's going to start happening in September is a graffiti and activism cast, uh, which I will help run. Basically, I will help. Um, the, we're bringing a lot of um, artists to lecture and we're going to have a project and it's going to be really that's nice, cool. really cool. Um, and aside from that, um, I actually... I'm going to also take part of the mediation course, oh. which will be extremely nice. And I guess I would also like to bring back debates to MS. I know yeah. it's not specifically about the conflict, but it's one thing that I remember I really wanted to have. And I do think that it's a really good preparation for the peace simulation and for mission week. And I do think sometimes we need to distance ourselves from the conflict. Like I don't think every cast and every activity in MS should be about the conflict. Yeah. It actually should be the opposite. People should take their knowledge from oh, art, from debate, yes, and then bring it to the peace simulation or else it would just be like preaching the whole way through. You know, you should debate like this and you should argue like that it's and scripted. it's all about the conflict. Yes, exactly. So I do think that actually different projects and castes that are not necessarily like, you know, directly linked to the conflict would actually benefit our view of the peace simulation and mission week and so on. So like that's that. also something I would like to do. I like that. And I'll, we'll probably have time and occasion to talk about this more later, but I'd love to sort of like push in this direction and maybe we can think of some sort of format of I mean last year we had the prep days but as you said those were very specific and they're still very useful but they were concentrated on like okay what is the information what is the knowledge what is the history how can we go about debating it so very peace simulation uh, focused but it would be nice maybe even starting in September to have a like weekly discussion based debate or conversation and I think since maybe that's a bit of also like your new area of expertise or activism, I'd love to have it or it'd be nice if it was a bit also about climate change because let's look around. That's the big, big, that's the big thing that I feel like no one talks about, even though everyone does. No, not I, enough. Yeah. 
and and one of the hottest week that has ever been on earth and um and MS, I know MS is also like big on sustainability and they have different projects going on, but it would be nice to have have it sort of like linked. This connection, yeah. Think, yeah, we often think of like peace simulation and peace is one thing and sustainability and is And yes, another. exactly. And it's really not. Exactly. It's, it's, like, it's, it's really interconnected. Yeah, and Avesh Shalom are great at kind of showing you that connection because I came there and I was like, there is no connection between these two things. Yeah. And then I just, I got schooled. I got schooled. Yeah. And it was really amazing to see how everything is interconnected. And especially, you know, even just in my opinion, even just our, you know, because in Israel right now, we do have this extremely problematic situation of the um, uprising. Or I, I'm actually not sure how to translate it, but um, everything is going on with our government yeah. and our legal system. And it's just that, you know, I do Not think it's important. Good. I do go, I do go to protest every week and, you know, like it's an extremely important topic, but I do feel that in Israel, we always have something that's a bit more important, a bit more uh, urgent than the climate change crisis. And one of those yeah. things is the conflict and is the army. And I do think that if we find a way to show people that it's connected, then it suddenly won't be an afterthought it would be yeah. something in the forefront because we always will have this threat and that war and this yeah. conflict and you know it's it's never that ending and we never yeah. get that yeah, yeah so that's right i think it's really and, important and there's so many intersections like broadly speaking globally of course in terms of like refugees and conflicts and it, it, it's all the same thing but then locally even more because the middle east is a region that will be affected heavily affected heavily affected heavily and also relatively like earlier than other regions especially the global north etc we don't need to like i know i know you're on the same page <laughs> but uh i just want to reiterate and then maybe we can talk with sai as well and maybe it would be nice to have some sort of like preparation debate with make maybe weekly or bi-weekly topics that go about climate change but that sort of like intertwine it with all the other things that people feel so strongly about at MS, which are conflict and identity and how do we come all together. So yeah, that, that could be an interesting direction. I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, and um, do you have any closing wishes or thoughts about your upcoming year with the Charney? How are you feeling? Um, uh, I am a bit I told you, I'm a, I'm a bit scared because I do think this role requires a lot of maturity and objectivity and all of those things. And I do want to do, you know, real world impact and connect with the students. And I think one of the things that I fear of is that I'm not a junior staff and I don't know them, you know, like, because even before I did a peace simulation with you, I knew who you were. You were like, yeah, um, you were, you were there. DP2. Yeah, you were there. And um so I just think that that connection made it made it easier to you know to start working together to start collaborating together and I'm afraid that if I don't have this connection with the students before that would you know that's like something I need to it, it would be a challenge I guess like I need to figure out how to truly connect with them and uh, get them to know me, I guess, because they didn't have that chance because I wasn't their DP2 and I wasn't, you know, their junior staff. Mm. So that's like one worry, I guess. And what also, you, you know, I brought it about? before, but what am I excited about? Um, I guess, you know, it's a bit cliche, but I did really miss Emis and Charney. You know, I really, for the past few years, I've really wanted to go back somehow and collaborate somehow because it's such a like it's a place with extremely good memories. So I do want to work again with Hadas and Ainat and Sari and all of those people that I really miss. And um, I also want to see how I view MS from a different lens, you know, as an intern and as like a quote unquote staff member, I guess, and not uh, as a student and not as, you know, uh, a cast leader, I guess to see that experience. And I think, you know, even after these two years coming there with like a bit more experience and a bit more knowledge would also make this experience a whole 
new one and a different one. So I'm really excited for that. Um, and I just, yeah, I just, I, I really want to make an impact, even if it's, you know, on MS, on in Israel, in the Middle East, the world, you know, whatever, whatever I get, I'll be happy with. And it's going to be a great year. I know we have a lot of plans to, you know, make it a great year. And hopefully everything will be successful. And yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it will. And I'm also hopeful for it. And I think we've reached our time. So we'll thank our listeners for tuning in. And you'll hear a lot more about Yael's work in the following month. And I'm also excited to get to work a bit with you. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, bye, Al. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um...